Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for still being here. And welcome to Earth. So I always think, imagine that I'm saying that to Spock or Mork or someone like that, right? But in fact, it's not that. And uh, so it's a little bit crazy. In fact, even spell check doesn't like the way we say welcome to Earth. Uh, because, of course, it isn't the planet Earth. It's the Emissions Reduction and Research Test Hub, which is a new capability that we have at Anasis Island at the Motive Power Center of Excellence. It does emissions uh, testing to a high standard, as you can see. It's, a, it's an old idea that's finally come to fruition. I guess it all started when air care shut down. Remember air care? And you had to take your car and uh, they made you waste a half an hour and they charged you a bunch of dough and then off you drove again and didn't have to do it for another year. They, uh, when that shut down, uh, it wasn't problematic for any of us, but of course they tested things other than cars. You know, they tested other small engines that people said, I've designed this thing that, uh, you know, chainsaws and so on, and they would say, oh, this is the emissions of your, uh, of your piece of equipment. And when they left, there was no capability to do that in, uh, in BC. And, uh, and they encouraged us to, they encouraged BCIT to develop that capability. And one of the things they did in that regard was they donated a lot of equipment. So, so that was the genesis of this whole idea. Um, so I guess they talked about it for a long time, about what it should look, look, look like and what it should be. And a few other things happened. I guess Volkswagen, uh, some folks at the university in West Virginia, uh, West Virginia tested some Volkswagens and found that Volkswagen was uh, not really telling the truth about the emissions of their vehicles. And, 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 uh, and that's probably changed the world a lot, but it emphasized the need for independent uh, testing from somebody that has no, no reason to, to, to fudge the numbers, right? So, uh, so that kind of went on for a while. Let's see if this will go forward or backward or either way. Sure. So there's, uh, look at that, gears and everything, right? I sort of, uh, uh, bridging industry, clear skies, clean water, fresh air. We didn't want Earth to sound like it was just about big trucks and, and heavy equipment. Of course, it is about big trucks and heavy equi equipment, but it's also about uh, being uh, clean. So, so we saw this as important for uh, dealing with the government and with industry and, with, uh, and in education. So in terms of government, things like the Port of Vancouver, um, if you drive a big truck into the port to pick up a container, the rule is kind of today, the truck has to be newer than 10 years old. And they say that because it makes it easy for them to take environment, you know, that's an easy environmental cop-out, right? It just says uh, the legislation changed then, if the truck's older than that, it won't meet the standards. If it's newer than that, we don't care, we just care about the date. But we can make it so that you could change a truck that was 11 years old to be compliant or exceed the standards that exist today and maybe not sell it to someone else who would use it someplace else uh, and still be spewing filth into the air, right? So, so or uh, scrap, do you know about the Scrap It campaign uh, program? So in uh, the government uh, started it, I'm not sure if they still uh, own it, but they still fund it certainly. Uh, if you have an old car and you want to upgrade to a hybrid or an electric car, the government will give you somewhere between six and, or three and six or 11,000 uh, bucks to upgrade. So Scrap It has to kind of say, yeah, we're really doing some good. And they say, well, we're getting those old cars off the road and replacing them with new ones, but we just made a, an arrangement with them where we're going to take a bunch of those uh, old cars that they've bought, or that, that they've bought, and before they actually get scrapped, we'll drive them around a little and test what the emissions actually are. And so then Scrap It can justify its existence by saying, this is how many tons of pollution we're taking out of the environment. It's a very cool thing. So that's a uh, relationship with government. We have a relationship with, uh, uh, with industry. Uh, let's see, Empire Hydrogen is, is a good example where uh, they, they developed some stuff, and I'll tell you more about them later. Uh, we think in education and training, we like that the students out at that campus get to see, uh, and the faculty at that campus, get to see not only the uh, best emission testing equipment in the world and to work on it, but they also get to meet innovators who are coming up with ways to reduce emissions, and they get to get ideas about some of the best methods in the world for doing that. So that's, uh, that's 
the big picture of, uh, of uh, I'm going backwards, aren't I? Uh, so let's see, what do we want to talk about here? When we say uh, uh, at, uh, at a high standard, so uh, every, people, almost every presenter talked about the standard that they, they were working to, right? Uh, there were lots of mention of CSA or CUL. Uh, Canada doesn't really have particularly good standards about emissions testing, uh, but California does. And so uh, the equipment that we have at, at uh, Anasis Island now will test to these California Air Resource Board or CARB standard, which is the toughest one in the world. Um, the bottom point there, just diesel particulate matter. There's a lot of different kinds of pollution that come out of engines potentially, right? The, uh, the greenhouse gases that uh, cause global warming is one set. Particulate matter is a different problem. It doesn't cause uh, gre it, uh, global warming, but particulate, it's, it's unburnt diesel, and, uh, and when it gets less than two microns in size, your body will actually, your lungs, you breathe it in, your lungs will absorb it, send it into your bloodstream, and eventually cause you all sorts of loathsome diseases and kill you. So it's good if we can, uh, can measure for that, right? Uh, one of the pieces of equipment, the one that we got most recently, is the PEMS unit. This is the same as the University of West Virginia used. Uh, for Volkswagen, only ours is three years newer and has more features and options, of course. Uh, so we can test at a very high level all sorts of, of uh, noxious emissions. Uh, let's see, we have, uh, uh, in, in behind the window there, don't look behind the window, we have a 1,000 uh, horsepower di uh, dynamometer, so we can take an engine up to 1,000 horsepower, hook it up to the machine that's back there and to the PEMS unit and test it under a whole lot of loads and see what the emissions are. Uh, there we're testing Empire Hydrogen and uh, they, they've, they've commercialized what they, what, what they were testing for then, but uh, uh, essentially what it let them do was find the best mix of hydrogen to put into the cylinder to achieve what they were going to do and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. We have a 2,000 horsepower dynamometer in the room, but it's not hooked up yet, and we're just waiting to build a little more cash before we try to hook that up. Cash is always, uh, always an issue. Uh, this is a different kind of uh, dynamometer here. This is the, like the ones you, you remember at AirCare, if you were here when AirCare was still alive. So, uh, so that's the BCIT uh, hybrid vehicle, uh, uh, natural gas and diesel on the dynamometer, so we could spin the wheels and put it under load and, uh, and, test, uh, and test it, right? So you probably didn't know at Anasis Island we had, uh, we had a truck like that. Um, I want to talk a little bit, uh, I'm bouncing around more than I should probably, about the education of it all. So, uh, of course, we're an educational institute and lots of people, one of the resistances even to buying electric or zero emission vehicles is your mechanic probably doesn't know how to, how to work on them. Uh, what about uh, when, when there's a fire in an incident and an accident, but one of the vehicles is an electric vehicle? How sh do first responders have to know something about how to respond to that? Uh, what about those vehicles that are more than 10 years old that we should convert to something else? Who's training people how to convert, it so, uh, convert them so that it's done safely? So we see a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity for education out there. And of course, early on when we were talking about uh, Earth, it was about emissions reductions, but of course we love the idea of reducing emissions to zero. So zero emission vehicles, that would be uh, uh, electric often or hydrogen, something like that. Uh, and there are a lot, you know, I was talking last week with someone who wants to power an airplane with ammonia, and would we work with them? Uh, uh, and he had a bunch of compelling reasons why that was a good idea, but uh, I don't know that we're going to work with them. We're still trying to figure that out. So you can see a whole bunch of different fuels there, all of which have different features and capabilities uh, and availabilities. Uh, and we think we can help train people to install and service and repair in all of those. Uh, the Empire Hydro, see that, see that thing there? It says, identifying the source of fuel economy, horsepower emissions improvement when using hydrogen fuel enhancement generators with engines. I want to tell you, that was the name of this presentation until Monday at 4.30 <laughs> when the guy who was supposed to give the presentation said he couldn't be here and they asked me if I would give one and I said, I can't give that presentation. <laughs> but I could tell you about Welcome to Earth. 
So that's, that's how I got to be here. Because <laughs> I'm not a doctor or even a researcher, but I still got to be here. Cool, eh? So, <laughs> so in that situation, I guess the walls inside the cylinder are cooler than the center of the cylinder. And when the uh, piston uh, cause, uh, when there's compression and ignition, the fuel at the side of the cylinder doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't burn. It just comes out through the exhaust system, and that's what causes a whole lot of the evil. So Empire Hydrogen figured out a way, if they could create hydrogen and dump it into the cylinder just as, uh, uh, just as it's going to ignite, then uh, it makes a little flash of more heat. The, the hydrogen isn't being used to power the engine, but it's being used to burn the extra fuel, you know, 20 or 30 percent that doesn't burn. And what happens then is the engine burns cleaner, the emissions are less, the uh, filters need to be cleaned less, there's more power. It's a whole story of goodness and light. So, uh, and Bruce could have given you a compelling 10-minute talk about that, but I cannot. Uh, Earth also has, uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay to admit you don't know everything, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Earth also has a, uh, just received uh, from the Institute uh, Research Committee uh, uh, funds to compare our pollutant and greenhouse gas emissions of compressed natural gas with diesel fuel for heavy duty vehicles. So they've been mixing uh, uh, natural gas and diesel for a while in, in truck engines and other big engines. Uh, and there's some ranges where it works well and some ranges where it doesn't and there's times when it causes pinging. But Dr. Sonia ba uh, Boscovich, who's uh, the Associate Dean at the aerospace campus is, uh, was, was just given money in, from internally to do this review and uh, Bruce Thompson out at, uh, out at the uh, Anasis Island campus will actually supervise a lot of it uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and hopefully a year from now one or both of them will be here to tell you that uh, we found some interesting stuff because we intend to share that re the results of that study with a whole lot of people. So that's, uh, that's the uh, uh, there's two of the main things going on out there, that uh, research that Sonia's doing and, of course, uh, work with people like Empire Hydrogen and other people who have, they have bolt-ons or uh, additives to put in the fuel that they, and they have reams of calculations that say this is how much awesome goodness it does. But in Canada, they don't have a place, uh, this side of Ottawa, to test and be able to demonstrate that it's true until we created Earth. So we think, again, we're working closely with uh, government. Uh, uh, down there at the bottom where it says Metro Vancouver, Metro Vancouver has a whole lot of uh, zero emission vehicles, but they're giving us uh, their data on maintenance costs and what maintenance they're doing as we develop maintenance programs for, uh, uh, for Red Seal technicians who trained before there were zero emission vehicles. And so it's, it's making a difference, right? Uh, the Ministry of BC Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, they've uh, given us money at, uh, uh, here in Burnaby to develop uh, training for, again, Red Seal technicians for autos in Anasis Island. They'll do it for heavier equipment and off-road heavy equipment, you know, bulldozers and so on. So that's a whole lot of things going on at Earth. So, welcome to Earth. Thanks for listening. Right.